We are the Institute for Intuitive Intelligence, revolutionizing intuition by training spiritually fierce women globally as qualified intuitive guides. Subscribe for the leading research and teachings on the conversation of intuition development. Hello, dear beloveds. Well, I am talking all things leadership this week. And if you've been spending any time with me at all, you'll know that we are very interested in uh, a new paradigm model of leadership. Of course, being on the spiritual path, it's quite an obvious statement that you would want to be contributing to and participating in a reality that is not perpetuating the abuse of power um, that we see in the current models of leadership in the world. And that um, regardless of how good a person is when they are brought into power, it seems an inevitable truth that that, that power will corrupt and that power will uh, allow the individual to believe that they have some special authority that excludes them from engaging in an ethical world. Now, this isn't true for every leader, but if we look at the great leaders in the last hundred years or so, uh, you know, or even just the leaders in the last hundred years or so, not those we would even necessarily describe as great, we see that there has been oftentimes an abuse of power and that is just what we know out loud. And I'm not just talking in politics, I'm talking, you know, CEOs of companies who think it's all right to, you know, behave in a corrupt way, taking financial advantage of those who earn far less money in their companies. And also in the spiritual world, of course, with the collapse of the guru system, we're seeing how that abuse of power has been pretty global and that what we're looking at is a model in which when given authority, it seems those who are offered that power uh, will use it to their own personal advantage and forget the role or responsibility they've been handed. So what do we do about that? Well, I'm going to be going into more of that and how we can navigate our own uh, personal relationship to power in my training on Friday, Intuitive Intelligence for Leaders. And even if you don't identify yet as a leader, but are very curious or feel drawn towards that archetype, I would strongly encourage you to uh, register and learn more about how to manage that fear of doing harm or fear of being harmed or fear that you are stepping outside of your mandate or that you are overstepping the mark or you're thinking too big of yourself. All of the ways that we can mess ourselves up when it comes to being called into that archetype of the leader. But today I want to talk about something that I've been uh, speaking about for a while now, which is the shadow side of leadership. And so when we do get over ourselves and we're like, okay, I'm being called into this role of leadership we can find it, um, you know, that, that our expectation might be that, that the hard part was saying yes, and now I'm doing it, it should all be easy. And unfortunately, that is often not our experience. But fortunately, those who've gone before us can guide us in understanding how to manage the shadow sides of leadership. And really, what I'm speaking about here is the things that others may do or believe or say about you as a result of you stepping up and saying, okay, I'm willing to be the demonstration because immediately that you let yourself become visible, whether you call that leadership or not, you will be perceived as a leader and inevitably others are going to have opinions about that. And a lot of that will depend on their own relationship with their leadership archetype. A messed up relationship, if you're afraid of your leadership archetype, you're going to project that onto others. But let me talk about what I believe the four qualities of leadership are in their shadow side. Or another way to think about this is four indicators that you might be a leader if you haven't yet made peace with that truth, because there's a very good chance that if these things have happened to you, then you are a leader whether you want to say it or not. And my job is to make as many women as possible comfortable claiming that, that role as the sacred leader or the super conscious leader I'm going to talk more about what a super conscious leader is on Friday because that is a new way of speaking about leadership that I'm, I'm really excited to share with you. And it really helps us avoid these pitfalls. So number one, let's get into it. What is the number one shadow side of being in this leadership path from my own experience? And this is something that is pretty much unavoidable. If you step up and you start speaking and teaching and leading and guiding others, is that people will make a false idol of you. It doesn't matter if you say, don't make a false idol of me. The power is within you. Claim your own bloody power. I'm just here as a demonstration of my own journey. I'm just doing what's right for me. There will 
inevitably be a projection onto you of being somehow special or magical, of containing an authority that they don't have. And the reason why people do this is multifaceted, but one of the main reasons is if you're the special leader, then I don't have to try to be that myself. So it's easier to imagine you've got the special magic source in you. I don't need to try to be that. I don't have to be the demonstration. I don't have to go deep into my devotion, my practices, my behavior in the world. I don't have to be accountable because it is a really big job. You have to be accountable and you have to be the demonstration if you are leading in the paradigm that I am speaking about. So that's the first one. People make a false idol of you. And just as quickly that they put you up on that pedestal that you didn't ask to be put up on, they'll knock you down. And then you'll find the other side of, of being, you know, on the, being a false idol is that you are then judged harshly as though you asked to be put into that place. Now, none of this is any of your business. It's all happening around you. And that's why we must be true to the adage, let neither criticism or compliments sway you, right? We must be unafraid to sit in our own experience and our own truth and not take it personally. It's important to review and reflect if someone is critical of you and the way you're doing something, of course, be self-reflexive, learn more about yourself, but it's a very good chance they're projecting their own shit on you. And that leads me to point number two, which is people will work their stuff out on you, right? So you are standing up as a demonstration and that even energetically, even before you say a single word is going to trigger, or what I prefer to say, activate others uh, by, their, by letting them see through your light their own unmet shadow programs, okay? So just by you existing and showing up and leading yourself through your um, congruence, your devotion and all the rest of it, you will become someone that others will project their stuff onto. It doesn't matter. Once again, like point one, it's not about you. It's not your job to fix or repair or control everybody's opinion of you. Although I have often been tempted to want to do that. It's like, can't you see I'm working really hard and trying to be a good person here? Why are you judging me? But it's not our business. And in fact, it's a really good indicator that you are doing your work well if you activate others. If you make everyone happy all the time, you're probably not actually doing anything. You're being politely approved of all of the time. You're probably just letting everyone stay in their comfort zone. And my job as a leader is not about your comfort, it's about your evolution, right? So if I'm, if I'm constantly approved of by people, if everyone's loving what Ricky's doing, I probably haven't gone far enough. I probably don't know what I stand for. I'm probably not provoking or agitating others into awakening. So, you know, be prepared for that. If you want to be liked, don't be a sacred leader because there's a good chance that you won't always be liked. Okay, number three, you are out there on your own, okay? The true meaning of avant-garde, leading from the front. And the vanguard is not a comfortable place to be because you are looking for community. You're looking for others to say, you're doing a really good job, you know, follow my lead. But you're the leader of that, whatever that is. And that might not be that you're downloading information that nobody's ever heard of. It just might mean in your community, in your family, in your environment, um, and in your own life, you are bringing a new paradigm, new information, a new way of being, and that may not necessarily have community around it yet. You may not have anyone that is approving of that and saying, yes, 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 you're doing a great job. I really understand everything. You know, very often what is coming through me for the Institute feels like it isn't necessarily going to be approved of or liked because it's beyond what the current paradigm is. And I had a great experience of this recently and an educator in Canada contacted me about the third level and she's like, you know, this is really amazing. I don't see anyone else doing what you're doing. She said, I know that in 10 years what you're doing will be commonplace, but I don't see anybody doing it now. And it was such a moment of reflection for me because I've often thought, oh God, how can I just do things that people get straight away? Like maybe I am, you know, trying to do something that's unnecessary. It's too hard. People don't get it. And when you hear that sort of confirmation, right, go back to neither criticism nor compliment can sway me, but it is important to reflect on or to support yourself in that understanding that not everyone is going to understand what you're trying to do as you're trying to do it. And that's okay. And you've got to figure out a way to support yourself in that and, and to have your own, you know, inner community, those people that you can rely on who will love you, even if they don't understand what you're doing. Okay, number four, we're doing a little quick go through here because this will be part of the bigger training 
on Friday and I do want you to join me or register so that you can uh, get the recording. It will be made available. And I think this knowledge is vital for any of us who are in the this sacred service world, in this industry of spirituality, who want to do things ethically in a way that is grounded, in a way that's sustainable, to grow and increase our power to serve. Okay, and the final one, this one will be no surprise to any of you who are in this path, I'm sure. Your mission is bigger than your comfort zone and it's exhausting, right? So every day you're like, maybe if I turn up today, it's all going to be easy and comfortable. And look, I love the shit out of what I do. I, I think my work is phenomenal. I get to do the best job in the world, in my opinion. And it's like, oh my God, I get paid for this. But it is uncomfortable. And it's not like I sit down and just do what someone else is telling me to do. And look, this may be true of just being an entrepreneur generally, and I get that. But I think when you're in the spiritual world, because the work we're doing is so deep, it's not casual. There's nothing superficial about it. It's never going to be light and fluffy work. It is okay and vital for us to acknowledge that we're going to be out of our comfort zone pretty much for the rest of our lives. And, and what are we going to do about that? How do we support ourselves? And how do we make it possible for us to sustain our service? Because that's what matters to me most about this work is that if you are called to be a leader in this space, I don't want you to burn out. I don't want you to lose your way. I don't want you to feel overwhelmed when someone criticizes you or someone doesn't understand you. And to really support those who are on this path of service to thrive and to grow and to expand and to increase their power to serve. That's what I want for all of us because the work we are doing is the revolution we must be willing to show up to this work fearlessly and to know how to support ourselves by knowing what the pitfalls or, or the challenges are going to be. And of course, once you do this often enough, you will find the gold within it. You will see how those criticisms and those challenges and that sense of constantly being stretched is the ground for growth. It is the place where you're going to meet yourself as the infinite. And that's exactly what we're here for. So I'll share the link. Thank you so much for joining me. Please come along on Friday or register so you can get the recording and, you know, let me know how this leadership role feels for you. Does it feel far away or really close? Do you feel overwhelmed by that idea of being disapproved of and not adored and worshipped or are you really?